Yo, what's going on, my people? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Fernando Savallos. I am a civil engineer in the state of Texas. And today we're talking about how to introduce yourself to a recruiter. I'm going to back up because the last couple of videos I've been focusing on how to excel and how to really rock your career fair. The last video before, or the video before this one, right? I think so. I'm getting the schedule right. Is how to rock your interview or the questions that you should be asking to an interview. But I failed to realize that some of you are still trying to figure out how do I have a conversation with a recruiter? How do I introduce myself? My first impression sucks. I don't know what I'm doing. And so this video is not going to help you exactly on how to develop your communication skills. It's not going to help you on trying to figure out how to sell yourself. But I wanted to share this video for you to really understand the things that you should be thinking about. When you have a conversation with a recruiter, when you have a conversation with somebody who has a position to give you an interview, a job, or whatever the case is, but these are the things for you to think about. So what do you need to think about? Well, first I want you to think about the fact that you need to have a conversation with this individual. Unfortunately, sometimes I experience people who I say, hey, a pleasure to meet you. My name is Fernando. What's up with you? And they're like, so my name is um, Fernando. I am a civil engineer. I'm a junior. I'm looking for a job. I want to work for a company. I want you to give me a job. Please, 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 please. Uh, this is what I can do. Dude, like chill, man. Like what's what's going on? Like who, who are you? What are you studying? What do you want to do? And so what I'm trying to get at with this is don't just have a conversation with someone, introduce yourself, and then just go into your elevator pitch. It's cool that you have an elevator pitch, but that's not going to help you because it's going to make the interaction a little bit awkward. You need to be able to have a conversation with someone. One of the tips that I share with people is before you give someone an, uh, your resume, make sure that you have a conversation with them first. Because I'm going to share with you all a story. When I was a student in college and I was just getting started, I was the person I'm telling you not to be. I was the person who was sharing the elevator pitch that I had just practiced for the last couple of hours. And then I was, you know, word for word, I knew exactly what to say. And the conversations were candid. They, they weren't genuine because I was just so focused on this is what I have to offer. This is what I'm looking for. Here's my resume. Please hire me. It doesn't work. Right. And so what I mean by have a conversation is this have a conversation. Right. Hey, how's it going, Adam? It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Fernando. I'm currently studying in civil engineering and uh, I'm a junior. I was wondering if you guys have any opportunities for interns uh, this coming semester or this coming summer. Oh, as a matter of fact, you do, Fernando. Okay, cool. So um, are you guys doing that today? Are you guys doing interviews in a couple of weeks? I'm just curious, you know, what opportunities are available and whether or not I'm available for them. Okay, cool. So, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, Fernando. What, what are you doing? Now, what I used to do was as soon as I asked that question, I would give him my resume and say, here's my resume. Please read it. Let me know if you have questions. Now, what does that do? Well, that makes you, that makes you like break the conversation, like whatever momentum you had in the conversation completely kills it. And so as I'm reading the resume, so now I'm going to put myself as a recruiter. I'm reading the resume. I'm going to spend maybe six seconds, 10 seconds going through it. And I'm going to start painting the picture of who you are. If I don't see a GPA that I want to see, I'm going to start painting the picture of who you are. If I don't see the pro projects, if I don't see the things that I'm looking for, again, I'm painting the picture of who you are. Now, when you have a conversation with someone, you paint the picture that you want for them. You're able to tell them exactly who you represent, what you're looking for, who you are. As I evolved and I became a better speaker and I became a better student and I became better at having these interactions and better uh, doing at first impressions, I would have a conversation with them. And then eventually they would say, you know what? I really enjoy, I really like this conversation. I enjoy talking to you. Do you have a resume for you to share with me, Fernando? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I would pull a resume out. I give it to them. They'd read it over and they'd say, oh, okay, cool. So it, it looks like the things that we were already talking about, they're already here. That's really cool. Um, you know, tell me a little bit more about the position of leader that you have in this organization. I would go into a story there. And so now you can better understand the importance of having a conversation because if you just give them the resume, they're going to look for the things that they're looking for. And if they don't find it, they're going to say, thanks for your time, but I'm not interested. And then you move on to the next thing. So again, that's number one tip. Have a conversation. Very, very important. Now I kind of, you know, alluded to what the things that you should be talking about doing that conversation, but I want to really do a better job of explaining to you all exactly the things that you should try to do during that conversation. Number one is intent. 
What is the goal in you having that conversation with them? Are you looking for an internship? Are you looking for a full-time position? Are you looking for a co-op? And so as I'm having that conversation back and forth with the recruiter, I'm letting them know and I'm throwing it in there that I'm interested in doing a summer internship in their Houston office because my family is there. Or I'm interested in doing an internship in their Dallas office because my family is there. You know, wherever you are in Texas, Atlanta, um, Colorado, like anywhere you're at, right? Throw it in there because as you're having the conversation, you're showing intent. What are you trying to get out of this conversation? Sometimes you just want them to, to review your resume and you're just looking for tips. Sometimes you're just trying to build your network and you're just trying to build that the people that you know. And so again, as you're having the conversation, build it in. And it's important for you to have that because again, as you as you progress that that, that conversation with them, you're gonna be able to um, you know figure out how you're gonna get there. Uh, and so it's really, really important for you to you figure that one out. Now, the second one, a little common sense here, but your background, what, what do you have? What, what are you doing? What are you studying? Um, what year are you in? Are you a junior? Are you a senior? You're a freshman. Are you, uh, you know, just graduated and coming back for a job because you couldn't find one, whatever the case is, like, what is your background? Like, what, what do you have to offer? And so again, don't just go into your canned elevator speech and say like high level, exactly what you are, but build it in. Right. And so Again, going back to the conversation piece, it's very important for you to practice that. And I'm gonna, I can't stress it enough. Being able to have a genuine discussion with someone is very, very important. That interaction you have with, with them is gonna be able to help you figure out whether or not like you're moving in the right direction. And so again, as I'm having this discussion with you, it's important for you to really understand where, where am I and everywhere I'm doing. Now, as you're having this conversation with them, this discussion with them, make sure you understand the next steps with them. Right. And so if you are in a career fair setting, if you are in an interview, if you meet someone in an elevator, if you meet someone at lunch, what are the next steps? If you have that interaction with them and you met a recruiter and you want to understand like what happens after this, ask them the question. Hey, so do I send you an email after this? Uh, do can I get your card? Can I get your phone number? Can I get your email? Can I get your Instagram? Like it does. I don't know what, what the next steps are for you. Right. But if you're looking for that job, you want to make sure you do a really good job with a follow up. I can't tell you how many times I've had the opportunity to meet really good candidates, uh, people who are could be a great asset to the company I was with, and um, they just wouldn't follow up. They wouldn't do the next steps that they told me that they were going to do. It's very, very important for you to understand if you're the one reaching out to them or they're going to reach out to you. Because again, recruiters see hundreds of people. They, they see so many in the in, uh, resumes. And so if you are not doing their job for them, if you're not making it easier on yourself, you're going to get passed up. And it's unfortunate and it kind of sucks to know that you did all of this work and they're still not going to give you a call. They're still not going to give you, you know, an opportunity to interview with them. And you start kind of second guessing yourself and whether or not you're good enough. And the thing is like, that's just the way the economy works. This is the way the, the corporate culture works. You have to be very mindful of the people that you're meeting and you have to be very mindful of the next steps and the follow up. Because again, if you don't do that job for them, if you don't take the next step, it's going to be, you know, like a waste of your time. Now, I also want to share things for you to be super mindful. I cannot stress this enough. Like this is a story I want to share with you all. I hope that you guys are going to learn the, the things not to do. Um, I was at a career fair at a college and uh, the student comes up to me and the first question he says, what's your major? Okay, cool. Um, civil engineering. And before we even have a conversation or say anything to each other, he says, no, thanks. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. You probably can not help me. Thank you. I'm, I'm, and he leaves. And that was that. So what happens? He goes and talks to one of my friends who's recruiting for the job that he's looking for. He's talking to this person and um, I just, for whatever reason, happened to like gravitate over to that area because they were going to go grab lunch or something. As I'm having this discussion, as I'm waiting for my friend, the guy sees me at the corner of his eyes and looks at him and I nod at my friend. And then he kind of know he kind of tells that um, I know the person he's talking to and you can kind of see it in his eyes. Like he's like, oh shit. Right. Um, and yeah, like as we leave away for, for lunch, then my friend starts asking me like, did you get a chance to talk to this guy? And I was like, yeah, I did. And you know, unfortunately I couldn't vouch for him. He was like, why? I was like, well, he came over to me. He just, he asked me this question and then that was that. And he left. And so again, like that, if I don't know someone and someone is just about to know you, like you have to be very mindful of your character. You have to be very mindful of who you represent. 
when you're having interactions with people, you never know who you're going to meet. You know, maybe the person that can help you right there on the spot is really good friends with the person who, who has hiring power at another company. If maybe you interact with me and, and I really like you and we really enjoy the conversation, but I'm civil engineering, my fiance works in mechanical engineering, she can get you a job. If I can vouch for you, what does that mean, right? I can help you get your foot in the door. Maybe I won't get you a job, but at least I can help make your job better or easier. And so it's important for you to really understand that the people you meet can take you a long way because it's not about who you know. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. And as they say, your net worth is your network. And so again, I can't stress it enough. Please, please, please make sure that whatever interactions you're having are positive interactions. Bring your A game. Have good conversation. Don't just think that you're going to hit, you know, plug and play on the steps that you have to do to be successful. It doesn't work that easy. If you guys are liking these videos, please make sure you drop a like, drop a comment. I want to interact with you all. I'm really enjoying making these videos. And for, in order for me to, be able to continue to make these videos, I need to make sure that people are taking advantage of them and seeing benefit in them. So please make sure you drop a comment. Uh, follow me on Instagram. You can reach out to me through DMs there. And I look forward to talking to you on the next video. You got to care. Peace.